guys, welcome back to the workshop. Chris with American Warrior Forge here. So today, I'm gonna to show you guys how I forge a corkscrew. I like to open wine bottles, but I also do a bottle opener on one end of the handle. So it's a corkscrew bottle opener combination, so it'll work for just popping caps off of beer bottles or sodas or whatever you're gonna use it for, and it also has a corkscrew on it. So I'm gonna go through the forging process. I'm gonna use a quarter inch round bar to start with. I start off with about 18 inches or so. That's usually a little more than I need. Um, but I'll walk you through that process. First step is going to be to reduce some material at the end and to draw a taper. But it's a little different than the tapers we've drawn before because we're going to start on the back end of the tip and fit it out all the way down. And I'll show you how that works. I already got the forge lit. Let's get cracking. So to start off, once we have our steel hot, I take about five inches of the end and I square it up to begin the, the forging process. So I'm just going to use the face of the hammer against the face of the, uh, or against the material at the face of the anvil to square this up and then get it straight, rotating the bar back and forth 90 degrees. I'm not trying to murder it because I don't want to thin it out too much right now. I'm just squaring everything up. Okay, so now that we've got it square, the next step is going to be now to begin our taper. But rather than tapering from the very tip like we've done before, we're going to taper from about where our squaring begins, so about five inches back or so. It's going to be the same process. You're going to hit the steel, but you're going to hit it in the face of the anvil, okay? And what you're going to do is you're still going to rotate it back and forth, 90 degrees each direction in between blows of the hammer. But rather than concentrating those blows right on the tip, you're just gonna focus on that one spot about five inches back. That's gonna start the taper there and thin out that material. And then as we go on, we're just gonna to continue to move the hammer further towards the tip and thin it all the way down. So we have a nice long, approximately eight inch taper from that spot we began all the way to the tip. And we want that whole section to be thinned out because that's gonna be our corkscrew. So as you can see, I'm really taking my time, multiple heats, and I'm working this from the back end all the way down to the tip so that it's thinned out and roughly the same diameter, a little less than an eighth of an inch or so, all the way to the tip. And then at the tip, it's gonna really refine so that we can begin our corkscrew from that point and have a nice jagged point. And I'll show you how I get that super sharp uh, to begin our corkscrew. So we're just gonna thin this all the way out, nice long slim taper. It's not gonna have uh, very steep angles at all, but we need to thin that material from the very back.
once I'm pretty happy with the length and diameter of my taper, I'm gonna go ahead and knock off the corners, to take it from square to octagonal, and then kind of roll it around and knock the rest of those corners off, kind of round it up all the way down that shaft to the point, and just clean up any unsightly hammer marks, make everything even, smooth as I can, and then get it nice and straight. Once I have my taper about eight inches or so, and it's thin all the way down to the tip, long, nice taper, it's not really thick on one end and then pointy on the other, it's a pretty consistent diameter all the way down up until that tip where it really starts to taper a lot and everything's nice and straight and I'm happy with the rounding. Next I'm going to go into making the very tip of it pointy because that's what's going to go into the cork. To do that, you can use files. Uh, I like to use a grinder. And what I do is I, I'll put you know, like a 60 grit belt or something like that on my grinder and then I will roll the tip back and forth on the slack in the belt so that that kind of grinds away the material and finds that inner piece a little bit and brings that very tip to kind of a sharp point. And that will make it so that once the corkscrew is actually formed, that tip will easily or more easily insert itself into a cork. Now once I have the tip refined, I'm going to go into starting the forge or shape the body of the cork screw here. Now to do this, we're going to introduce a series of bends into the steel. You could do this over the horn of the anvil. I prefer to use a hardy tool, um, a, bit, a pair of bending forks for my hardy tool. Um, and I, I use that to get a little bit more symmetrical bend and, and to do it a little easily. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that taper that we forged and just about maybe an inch behind where the taper started, so about eight to nine inches from the tip, I'm going to insert that up against one of the forks and I'm going to bend the rest of the material around so that it's bent in half. I'm then going to take about five inches from where that bend begins, put the material back in the bending fork and bend the rest of it the other direction, as you see here in the video. And what that's going to do is give me kind of an S shape in the handle with the corkscrew taper that's going to eventually become the corkscrew itself, facing perpendicular to those bends. Once we've got the bends and I've cleaned it up with a wire brush to knock off the scale that pops off during the bending process, I'm going to go ahead and switch hardy tools and put a hardy hot cut into the hardy hole. I'm going to insert the work back into the forge, but not from the tip that we've forged, but the back half of the handle that so far hasn't been in the forge up to this point. We're going to get that hot, and then from where the bend starts at the top, I'm going to measure about four inches from basically once that bend passes the center line of what is going to be our corkscrew, uh, which is that taper that's facing perpendicular to the handle. I'm going to measure about four inches from where that perpendicular taper meets the upper portion of the handle, and I'm going to cut off anything in excess of that using the hardy hot cut. So once we've cut off the excess material on the handle, we're going to insert the handle back into the forge and get it hot. I'm then going to square up that material and draw a taper. But it's not going to be the same type of taper we drew on the other end for the corkscrew. It's going to be a more traditional taper where it's a little bit steeper of an angle. We're just going to draw the tip out to a taper and elongate that a little bit, but we're not really trying to reduce the material all the way down that shaft like we did in the first part. If you've watched my video on drawing a tapers using modeling clay or my video on how to forge a hairpin, it's going to be the same process that I used in both of those videos for the second one we're drawing here.
once my taper in the handle portion is fully forged, I'm gonna heat it back up and I'm gonna begin just a little slight curl at the tip by hanging the tip of that taper over the horn of my anvil or you can do it over the edge of the anvil and deliver kind of downward glancing blows onto that to curve it. down on the face of the anvil and hammer that taper backwards onto itself so you end up setting to curl that material. It just gives it a nice little decorative curl but it also is functional because that becomes part of the gripping mechanism if you will for the bottom. Once I have my curl established, again you can use the horn of the anvil for this or scrolling tongs. I like to use my bending fork hardy tool. We're going to go back to that tool and the curl we just created, we're going to bend that through the forks or over the horn to create a U-shape where the curl is going back into the handle because that little U-shape, that loop, and the curl are going to be the body of our bottle opener portion. As you can see here in the video, I was kind of rushing for time and I bent it with the curl facing up rather than redoing the curl. I just went ahead and used some scrolling tongs and twisted it back into the direction it needs to be, which is towards the inside of that bend. Now, not only do you want that curl to be the inside portion of that second bend that you just introduced into the handle, but you also want the curl to not be perfectly in line with that bend. You want the actual curl to sit up vertically just a little bit higher, just slightly, maybe an eighth of an inch or less from the curl itself, or sorry, from the uh, bend itself, because once we turn this into a bottle opener, that curl is gonna kinda sit on top of the bottle cap and help to apply leverage so that the tab on the other end of the bottle opener can do its job. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get it hot again, and then we're gonna use a ball fullering punch, and the inside portion of the handle where the curl is, Opposite the curl in the bend of the handle, I'm going to use the ball fuller punch and drive that material straight down into the face of the handle. And what that's going to do is it's going to move the mass and push it downward and out and create the actual tab that will grip the bottom of the bottle cap. So that the curl grips the top of the bottle, the bend goes around the neck of the bottle, and that tab goes underneath the cap so that when you apply pressure upward, it pops the cap for you. So now that we have our handle forged and shaped, we've got our bottle opener forged, it's time now to return our attention to that first taper we forged and create the actual corkscrew. Now to do this, I hold the, the work on the anvil with uh, holding it by the handle with a pair of tongs with the taper for the corkscrew pointing straight out in front of me. We then want to bend it to the left so that it's about 90 degrees or so off to the left as we're holding it in that orientation. And this is very important because if you do it another way, you very well could end up with a corkscrew that turns the opposite direction of what it should. So it should, it'll turn counterclockwise rather than clockwise to insert itself into the cork. So once again, hold it by the handle with the corkscrew pointing straight out in front of you. Bend that corkscrew taper 90 degrees or so to the left. You then can rotate the handle so that the tip of the taper for the corkscrew is pointing straight again, but without bending it back. You're just turning the whole workpiece now. And then we can begin our curl by using a pair of scrolling tongs and curling it backwards towards ourselves and you're going to continue to curl it with scrolling tongs until you've introduced as many twists as you like. I prefer somewhere between four and six twists in my corkscrew curl so that's what I'm going to go for. Once I've 
once I'm satisfied with the number of curls in my pigtail, I'm gonna then heat it back up and I'm gonna clamp it in the vise by the handle by making sure that the base of that pigtail taper is also locked in the jaws because what we're gonna do next is use a pair of pliers or scrolling tongs. We're gonna grip that very tip and pull straight up vertically to stretch out that pigtail we just worked so hard to tighten. Now that we've lengthened it, I go ahead and heat it back up again because again, it's a little out of place. The spirals are not perfectly in line. They're not all the same diameter around. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna now heat it up and put the spiral in the vise rather than the handle, but we're not clamping it in. I'm gonna rotate about a quarter turn. And every time I rotate the work about a quarter turn, I'm gonna clamp down on the vise. And what that's gonna do is gonna, it's gonna squeeze that spiral in the pigtail for that corkscrew. And it's gonna squeeze everything into alignment. And you just continue to tighten the vise just a little bit, back it off, rotate about a quarter of a turn, tighten it, back it off, rotate a quarter turn, and just do that until you're happy with it. Once you've done that, there may still be a little tweaking you might want to do with a flathead screwdriver or a chisel just to pry between the planks of those spirals uh, to make sure that the depth or height between each one is similar, but this is going to get everything in line to prep you for that. Once my corkscrew is done, I just kind of give it a, a once over, look it over, hit it with a wire brush, make sure if anything needs to be tweaked, it's tweaked. Uh, and here, I did notice that that curl for my bottle opener seemed just a little out of place. The, the opening seemed a little too big for me. And so I just tweaked that real quick before finishing it off. All right guys, and there you have it. That is our forged corkscrew bottle opener combo. Now from here, all I'm going to do is let it cool off, or I may cool it off in my make tank, uh, and then I'm going to do a wire wheel finish on it. So I'm just going to hit it with a wire wheel to knock off all the scale and kind of brighten it up. And then on most of these, what I like to do is I torch temper them, and then I brass brush the curl only. Alright guys, thanks again for joining me in the workshop today. Thank you so much for watching my videos. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I'm a new channel. Anything I can get really helps. So subscribe, like, hit me up with comments or questions. Thank you so much for joining me and happy hammering. See you on the next one.